church and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church alive and online on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ has risen, he has risen indeed. Today's worship might seem a bit different. That's because we're getting ready for really big change next week. Now this worship service has been exclusively online since shutdown Sunday, March 15th, 2020, 14 months and one day ago. So beginning next week, we open our campus to in-person worship at all of our services, both 8.30 and 10 a.m. And so we're making a few adjustments as we lean into being online and in-person at the same time. Thank you to our leadership team members and friends who have joined us today to help us get ready for next Sunday. So with that in mind, let me start again. Good morning, church. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church, alive, online, and in person on the seventh day of Easter. Alleluia. Christ has risen. Christ, Christ has risen, risen indeed. indeed. We are honored that you have invited us into your home, into your lives, and have joined us in person, be it from across the country, around the world, or across the street right here in Fredericksburg. A special shout out to our friends this morning in Kentucky, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Iowa. During this worship service, we will offer synchronous communion. So before we begin, you may wish to gather a few items, including a candle and matches, bread and cracker, and wine or juice. <clears throat> For those of us who are here in person, make sure that you have your communion with you as well. And if you don't, just let an usher know, then they'll bring it to you. Let us know that you are here through Facebook chat. And join us in prayer by putting your prayer requests in the chat on Facebook. And we ask that you submit them before the end of the sermon. Now, yesterday was Armed Services Day, and today we honor active duty and retired members of the six armed forces, as well as reservists and National Guard. If you would like to have your loved one added to the prayer list, Again, please submit their names, branch of military and rank before the end of the sermon, and we'll include them in our Armed Forces Day prayers. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to each other, loving God through our praise and worship, and caring for all of God's children. Several of our reaching ministries are meeting this week. Now our online coffee hour meets immediately following this worship service at 11 a.m. And this, sun, this evening at 7 p.m., it's Holy Hops, our theology pub, and it moves to our campus here on Plank Road. And we gather around our fire pit for a lively discussion and fellowship. So be sure to bring a lawn chair. And of course, it's always BYOB and anything that you'd like to eat. Now, if you can't make it, or you're not quite ready to venture out yet, no worries. We'll be taking a hot spot out there and zooming from the fire pit too. On Wednesday, the Women's Bible Study and Book Study meets at 9.30 a.m., and we welcome you to join us. We show our love through our worship and praise of God. And this is the last day for our 4 p.m. service, Next Sunday, it will be at 8.30 a.m. While not required, we ask that you do sign up for all of our services by going online or leaving a message on the office phone. We show care for our neighbor through our caring ministries, Faith and Action, working in, in conjunction with Lutheran World Relief, is creating quilts and kits. Yesterday, our middle school and TNT groups packed another 64 personal care kits 
Making Lutheran World Relief kits or quilts is a simple, fun, and tangible way to offer comfort to those suffering and express love to our neighbors in need. In early June, we'll gather all those items here at RLC to be transferred to the Lutheran World Relief Warehouse in Baltimore. From there, the items will be sent to where they are needed. You can find out more about what is happening at RLC and details for all activities by reading the latest edition of RLC Weekly Update, which is posted on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, and on our Facebook page. And there you can find links to these and many other opportunities to join us in mission. Now, if you're on Facebook, be sure to like us to get notifications of upcoming activities and ministry opportunities. Now, today we'll finish up our worship series, Living the Resurrection, with a sermon entitled, We Are Yours. In John 17, 10, Jesus says, all, are, all mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, as Jesus speaks to God. It is a reminder that we are not alone, that we continue to journey with the one who calls us and the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Alex Johnson, Ann and Chuck Price, and Greg Williamson. Our video production team is Dave Evers, Robert Schul, and Fred Riedel. And I am Heidi, Reverend Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection. So as we begin worship, for those at home, let us light our candles, and we'll light our candles here. We begin this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us as we sing our call to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. The words are found in the bulletin posted online, in your, in, or in your bulletin in your hands, or on the Facebook feed. Join us at the font for the thanksgiving of baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life and make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will share the peace 
here in our sanctuary as well as those at home and take this time even for those of us in our sanctuary pull out your phone say peace of the lord be with you with uh, text that with somebody that you love or know and they might be surprised to hear from you so the peace of the lord be with you and, and also, also with you, you. of the Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Join us for our opening hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also, also with, with you. you. Join us for our hymn of praise, Glory to You, God. Glory to you.
Together, let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own. And by, and by the, the powerful name of Christ, Christ you, you protect, protect us, us from evil. evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join us for singing and reading of Scripture. from 1 John chapter 5 verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. 
and whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Let us rise and welcome the gospel in song. says the Lord, I am coming to you, alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. And for the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. And while I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, And I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. The world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. And you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and I invite the kiddos to come forward. Now, I have a special friend that has asked to come along today. And um, our preschool kiddos who go to our preschool will recognize Scooter. They will recognize Scooter. Say hi, Scooter. Hi, everybody. Hi, boys and girls. Now, Scooter, why did you want to come today? Well, I have something very special to show everyone. Okay. Well, what is that? Well, it's my, my new ball. You're, you're showing us your new ball? Well, yeah. It's a ball. Well, yeah, but it, it's a special ball. And it has uh, chameleons on it and lots of designs and, and pretty things. And, and not only that, you can put water in it And when you throw it at somebody, it's going to go splat right on them. I am so excited because this ball means that summer is almost near and I can't wait to go to the pool. Oh, okay. Wow, 
this is really a cool ball. See, I told you. I told you. Okay, okay, okay. You know what, Scooter? What you just did was witness and testify. Well, what? It's okay. Witness and testify. So you saw this ball and it was really great. And so you witnessed this ball. And then when I was a little questionable about the ball, you testified to how wonderful the ball was. And the more excited you got, the more excited I got. Witness and testimony. See, that's what Mr. Huntington read about this morning when he read the scripture. Witnessing and testifying. And that we're to tell people about Christ. And you know what? When we tell them about Christ and we're excited about what we're talking about, then they're going to be excited about Christ too. Oh, so I need to tell people about Christ? Yes, you do. And you can also tell them about your ball. Oh, great, great. Thank you. Bye, boys and girls. Bye. Scooter comes with me to every chapel that our preschool has during the year. And he's a favorite. There's nothing like being upstaged by a puppet. <laughs> Jesus says, all are mine and mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. In John 17, verse 10. We are yours. Now, all of chapter 17 is Jesus' prayer for himself, for the disciples, and for those who will come after, who come by faith because the Jesus in them shared the love of Jesus. Now, Jesus prays that as God is in him and he is in God, may all the followers be in God and Jesus. Think for a moment. Think about those who have shared their faith with you. That's called faith passed on. And when Jesus, when the Jesus in us shares God's love, then we are giving birth, if you will, to new disciples and helping them to discover the Jesus in them. Just like I discovered the worth of the ball from Scooter. Now, here in our scripture this morning, the disciples hear Jesus praying for them, for them, for the beloved community, and for us, the beloved. Jesus is praying a prayer of love. Now, at this point, this is the night before Jesus goes to the cross. Jesus is praying this prayer of love, and Judas has gone out to finish the betrayal, and Jesus knows that there are many denials that are coming. Jesus is listening to the disciples' confusion and questions. I don't get this. What do you mean people aren't going to like us? And by the end of the next day, they will all be hunkered down in the upper room hiding and perhaps thinking three years of following this man and all we get is a cross. This was a pointless waste of time. You know, we've all been there at one time or another in various situations. It could be after a long day's work or after yet another meeting where people are just not listening and just not understanding because they're so mired in their own fears and are content to spin their wheels. We've all been there after another argument with a toddler, a teenager, a parent, a teacher, or a boss, rehashing the same thing again and again and again. We've all been there where we wonder if the small things that we do to save the environment are worth it because no one else is doing it. And we've all been there when the kindness that we show means 
that we wonder if the kindness that we show means anything because no one else is showing kindness and we wonder what difference will this all make? We throw up our hands and sink into pointlessness. What if I told you that Jesus gets us, that he knows what we will say, and that he knows that we're ready to scream at the top of our lungs, this is pointless and I am so done. Yeah, it happened to the disciples. You see, after the resurrection, even after Jesus appeared to them on resurrection evening, later Jesus finds the disciples back at their old professions, fishing and making a living off the water. And that's why in chapter 21 of John, he shows up on the beach, demonstrating to them that they missed the point saying to them, this is not what I hung on a cross for, and implores them, especially Peter, to feed my sheep. So essentially, get back in the world. There is work to do. In the portion of Jesus' prayer that we read this morning, Jesus didn't ask God to take the disciples Jesus didn't ask God to take you. Jesus didn't ask God to take me out of this world. Rather, he asked God to keep us in this world. Not to be of this world, but to be in the world. Because we can make a difference. Because we are, in fact, different as followers of Christ. Jesus knew it's going to be really, really hard. And so he prays for the disciples. He prays for us. Holy Father, protect them in verse 11. Now here's where the Greek gets a little bit interesting, depending upon which scholar you read. So when Jesus asks, Holy Father, protect them, protect can also mean cherish or guard. It's the same Greek word that is used to describe what Mary did with all those memories of the boy Jesus. You know, when he got lost for three days and when Jesus says, why were you looking at me for me? I was in my father's house. Mary cherished and protected her memories and guarded them so that they would always be with her. She loved and embraced the memories. And likewise, Jesus is praying to God to cherish us, to guard us, to embrace us. Jesus goes on to pray in verse 15, I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Here's another interesting word. In Greek, evil can be translated as uh, extracted from the pointlessness. And that word gets translated as evil or as wicked. But it also can mean pointless. In other words, Jesus is asking God, I ask you to guard them from pointlessness. Jesus, who knows us inside and out, prays to God that God cherish us and love us, and embrace us, and guard us, and take us out of that space and that feeling when we are convinced that everything we do will just be pointless and wondering why we even bother. We just want to forget it and move on. See, Jesus does this because there are times when doing what God has led us to do makes the world hate what we are doing. And the world pushes back really, really hard. Now, in my experience over the years, I have found that when people push back really, really hard, that I've gotten close, very close, to something that they are afraid of, a truth that they don't want to face, an identity, a personal silo. 
We all do it. I do it. You do it. We all do it. But what Jesus is saying is, don't retreat. Don't hide. Don't give up. And it is for these times that Jesus asks God to sanctify us because Jesus sends us out into the world to be in the world, but not of the world. To be doing God's work, to make this world a better place even when we acutely feel the pointlessness. To share the Jesus in us so that the world will know that God so loved the world, all of the world, the good, the bad, the ugly, and even us. That's challenging, isn't it? What does it mean to not belong to the world? Like Christ, the one that we follow, we have come into the world to love this world, even when the world does not love us back. And to not belong to the world means we do not espouse what the world says we should be all about. We are different. We don't look to society for guidance on how we live in community. Now understand, this is not a rejection of the world, but rather rejection of the values of the fallen world. To not belong to the world means that we place our values in community. And we know we are in this together. So it means when you falter, when you question, when you struggle, in community, there will always be someone to come alongside you and support you through the storm. That means that when I falter, When I question, when I struggle, I know that someone from the community will be there reminding me of the one who loves me the most. Yeah, even pastors struggle, especially right now. We're here for each other, for mutual consolation and support, to live in community, to live in God's beloved community, and to move out of our comfort zones to engage a hurting and broken world to be the reconciling force that this world and specifically our country so desperately needs. How are we going to do that? Well, how we live and how we love in this world presents Christ to those who do not know Christ yet. And the way we share and give doesn't reflect just on us. But the way we share and the way we give represents Jesus. Christ is glorified by the way we live in community. In verse 25, Jesus finishes his prayer. I will make known, I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved them have loved me may be in them and I in them. Let me say that again. I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you And the Jesus in you loves the Jesus in me. Jesus, we are yours. Amen. continues with, I come with joy.
in love laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all of that the new community of love in Christ's communion bread, in Christ's communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share each round division ends, the love that makes us makes us one as strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. The spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such wretched better known, alive among us here, alive among us here. Together, let's together, bound by all that God has done, we'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one, the love that makes us one. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us, and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ, in Jesus Christ, the joy of the, world, of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have an abundant life. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, Poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing to those in need, especially this day we remember Ray Dotson, Joanne Cooper and Jean Cooper, Laura Morgan, Bryce Downey, Karen Perkins, Hope Hall, Boyd Epperson, Bill Evans, Judy Thompson, Lauren Clark, Richard Curtis, Bill Taylor, and those that we name before you now, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying and learning and supporting each other. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. This day, especially, we remember those who, have, who serve in the armed forces. George Blake, in the U.S. Army, George Blake, Major, David Howe, First Lieutenant, Doris Howe, Camp Captain, Lowell Jean LaRue, Colonel, Jacob Morissac, Staff Sergeant, Waldron Wally Rosheim, Chaplain, Pete Thompson, Sergeant, Greg Williamson, Specialist, Fifth Class, served in the Vietnam era. In the U.S. Navy, Jack Morissac, Petty Officer, Second Class, and Jeffrey Sulke, Chief. In the U.S. Air Force, Donald Bly, Bly, Major. William Bill Huntington, Colonel. Robert Hall, Senior Airman. And in the U.S. Coast Guard, Melvin Hayter, Seaman. 
and all those who serve in the other armed forces and reservists and National Guard. Be with them, Lord, and bless them in their service to our country. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Grace. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints, especially those that we named before us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Saints. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we uh, give a mission moment as we are putting up the, <coughs> the uh, slides for uh, how to give and support the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. Just this past week, our preschool, Resurrection Lutheran School, finished up their year, and we had beautiful children in, in um, closing programs celebrating their accomplishments. But it doesn't stop there. This is an important ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church, and we are so thankful to be able to say that this coming year, in the fall, we've had to add a class and we're full. And that is great testament to the ministry here as we are one of the most popular schools and yet we have some of the lowest rates. Because of you, because of your support, we could not have done that. And so we give thanks for our students and for our teachers, Christy and Megan and Melissa and Libby and Donna.
you called us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we, join, we praise your name and join their unhending hymn. <laughs> which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Christ has spread this table before us. This is Christ's meal, not ours. And he does not care how we come, whether we come in high in faith or low in faith or maybe don't even have any faith left at all. But Christ bids us to come just as we are. Because when Christ says all, he means all. As we sing Lamb of God, prepare your communion. communion together in our homes and in our places as one. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Amen.
the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite people in their pots to stretch out a uh, hand and hold hands as we sing our celebration hymn, and of course, always, if you're there by yourself, we'll Stretch a hand out to you. the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus and the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Join us in our closing hymn, Beautiful Savior.
just a few reminders as we go out into the world to reflect the love of Christ through reaching and loving and caring for all God's people. Now, I just want to make a quick note. Our beautiful altar flowers today were given by Gay and Wayne Louderback in celebration of their 55th wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary. Following this worship, and we're running a little bit late, our online coffee hour will meet via Zoom. Holy Hops Theology Pub meets at the RLC firing at 7 p.m. this evening. Keep working on those Lutheran World Relief items. And next Sunday, be sure to get your red on as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. Links to these and other activities are on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, or our Facebook page. We look forward to seeing you at one of our many activities and right back here next Sunday at 10 a.m. So until then, Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ Christ is risen risen indeed! indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Go in peace! Share the good news! Alleluia! Thanks be to God! Alleluia!